to copy that entire group, I quite like that. Paste that into group two. You can mute them individually, uh, or you can just solo. And build up pretty complex rhythms. And this is now populated everything with a random note, with a random set of triggers. Basically hold two notes, so you want to have a gate between steps one and four. One, two. If you long press swing button for a couple of seconds, every channel is swing enabled. If you do it slowly, it's just one beat at a time. If you spin it faster, it goes every 10. Then go into 60, 64 mode. Um, every row is then one of the presets for that particular channel. Hold on channel one. And then that's going to add a step on every preset. If I press the K again, this is how many steps are currently active per, ch per channel. I want that to be five. I want this one to be six. And then doing its thing. So it's a different sound. And I want to save this one to a different button. That's basically your fast load. Let's do 10% probability on everything. Still bonkers. So the simple setup is Launchpad Mini, KV module, which if you follow the schematic, um, it's just TNC on a breadboard with a couple of connectors will be just fine if you just prototype in this. This is the Nopsal Modular uh, Arduino drum sampler, uh, DSP, which linked to on Instagram before. I'll put a link below. This just allows me, because this is an eight channel sequencer, trigger sequencer, uh, I just needed eight eight sounds. So this allows me to prove, well, to trigger eight different sounds. I've got a simple attenu attenuator here, just going into my recorder so I don't blow my ears. Hopefully the volumes are all okay. And this is basically gonna cover an overview of all the features, everything that it's this current prototype DIY um, module does. Obviously it's based off a very popular old module uh, in the Eurorack world. Um, but if you have a Teensy 4.1, I think a 4.0 will work as well. Uh, and a Launchpad Mini with a few very minimal components, you can build one of these for probably less than 100 quid. Um, you might already have one of those. You might have a Teensy lying around that you're not using or repurpose for an old project. So it's so already have shown the individual triggers. So each each step, when you're in vertical mode, um, this is kind of your, your main control view. You've got all your individual group. Within each group, you've got eight presets. And then each preset has eight channels and eight steps per channel. And out of the box, it's very simple, eight step sequencer. Uh, if I just move it into eight by eight mode, it's typical left to right, fruit loops, store type stuff. And then you just, so that's my, that's the kick kind of from this. Um, I don't know what all they all are. But you get the idea. Anyway, so that's each. Let's just clear preset one. So each group has got eight. eight. It's all nested together, and you can chain them together when we come onto the the looping functionality. You can chain one preset to another, so you can have sixteen, thirty-two, whatever up to 64 step length sequence per output channel. So what's the first thing to look at is probably um, just the, the fill section. So for each trigger, you're not too sure what you've, you've got hooked up. You can just press it once, keep your finger on it. And depending on which fill mode you're in, so you've kind of got this, there's three, three rows here of different, different features, um, very simple. And pretty fast and then concept for the similar ones for slightly more complex patterns I don't know exactly what the patterns are but 
based on some maths I worked out that seemed to sound musical. Find whichever one you like. Oh, I think I'm just gonna stick with that one. Just to kind of go a bit bonkers on some of the noises. There we go. So that's in that's that fill mode now. If we look at um, once you've got a basic pattern set up, um, you'll want to copy the different presets so you can loop them. So if we just literally have a really simple um, there we go. So we'll keep that going in the background and yeah figure out the volume level later on so that is now on preset one of group one if I go to preset two there's nothing there um, that's preset one group two again there's nothing there so if I like this one I'm going to copy this preset and I'm going to paste that into preset two paste again into preset three just do the whole thing and then double tap to turn off copy so now any preset I choose in here and it actually jumps straight to that preset um, so it's instantly jumping from that position if you change the, the mode so it's step mode to beat mode it won't change until it's at the end of the sequence not that it'll make any difference here but step one if I move into this preset here it only changes when it gets to the end to the eighth step but I just keep it in normal mode because I like to jump between the presets so now I've got nothing in group one, so if I want to copy that entire group, I quite like that, paste that into group two. So we now have each preset in group one and two are completely identical. So if I was to set the loops that I want to, to chain together, at the moment it defaults to all eight presets and two groups it could just be that actually you've got you've got different things set up so um, I only want to go back to group one I only want the first four presets um, to loop and I'm only want to only want to loop the loops so if I now start to chain those together it's just going to cycle through the first four presets so obviously if I was going to um, just do that turn off the looping and preset one two and three and let's make preset four slightly different so four will just kind of slightly different finish so now we'll loop that so very quickly you can see how you can build up a song or something anyway um, right, so that's copy and paste, kind of cover clear if you decide that you don't like it. Um, turn off looping, you probably can leave it on. But just let's clear group one. Go back to that one now. So in group, sorry, group two, clear group two. Back to nothing. Um, so you're not sure where you want to start. So we're in group, group two, preset zero, and we're going to just randomize this you've got three kind of three random modes green is for grand, uh, random triggers press again for random gates come on to that shortly and then yellow for chaos um, that will add the the notes in between the notes um, which I haven't touched upon yet so let's have a quick look now so if we go back to group one and we're on let's just move to a different channel let's look at the whatever this noise is kind of a fact, let's just mute everything else let's you can mute them individually uh, or you can just solo a couple of seconds to audition just that particular channel so now we're on we're on channel eight if we're going to zoom mode we can see the main notes that were set up these six now give you the the six notes in between them so if I now start to do build up pretty complex rhythms 
um, not very good at making these sound musical, but you get the idea, you can do that. And then this is this is now becomes your preset and this becomes your channel. So we're on channel eight, let's go to channel six for, oh no, they're all muted. Um, but you get the idea, you can, you can add stuff in, in mute mode as well if you want to. We go, this, this is the clap. So let's just add some more claps in here. So when we do come back, get out of zoom mode, either hit vertical or zoom mode to get back in. Then we'll just turn up the solo. And then the claps. Oh, I've muted claps. Uh, we're on the clap channel now. They highlight as yellow to denote that there are zoomed in 32nd notes, 64th notes, whatever they are in between them. Um, you can turn them all off and on. There we go. Sounds pretty cool. And we can go back to looping on this one. That's only on, the sub notes are only on preset one. So again, completely changed the way that sounds. Turn off looping, it's quite like that uh, group. So we'll copy that group now to group two. And in group two, um, we've only got the first four presets set up. So preset. Oh, I put them on all of them, didn't I? Sorry, I, I looped them. Let's on group two, let's clear the last four. So now there is nothing in these four presets. And we're going to randomize it. So again, trigger random randomizer. Initially it's set, so the swing uh, encoder is basically to set your probability of hitting notes for the randomizer. I think it's default to 50, but yeah, I'll remember it when you've you've stopped using it so far. If I just kind of say 30% probability of randomizing uh, this particular preset here for all the channels. And this is now populated everything with a random note, with a random set of triggers. So if we don't like that one, don't like that one. Maybe we like that, but it's a little bit heavy on those don't like the ride you get the idea uh, now this isn't probably the best module to set up um, to, to demo gates um, so let's just move on to uh, group three and then obviously we've we've talked about individual notes can be turned on and off if you long press on a particular I'm trying to think of a good example basically hold two notes so you want to have a gate between steps one and four one two this is just sending out a continuous voltage for those first four steps this again is not this is triggering on the the down voltage so it's not actually going to give us a good example, but imagine this was went out to uh, an envelope generator controlling uh, a VCA with an oscillator. And maybe every time this trigger goes through on the eighth preset in your loop, that will then trigger the sequence that this uh, VCO is linked with. You get the idea. So you can build up some pretty cool sounds. Step four, I've got it hooked up to a, a really simple envelope generator, which is hooked up to a VCA controlled by a very simple sequence. It's just a baby eight. So um, at the minute, if I just, you know, if I just turn it on always, I told you it's a really bad sequence. It's probably just going to tune. But yeah, you can have a combination of gates and triggers. So if we just kind of do a and let's just reset that. You get the idea. So go back to group one. And in group one, we've got loops going on. We've got different sequences on each of the presets. On group one, um, so group two, Keep getting my zero index in my head is just ingrained in my brain. So group one, group two, 
nothing in group three. Um, these are actually pretty much identical. So we've got the loop set for four. Say we want to have just three sets, one and four, and we want both groups to go as well. So if we just loop the preset and the group, but on group two, oh, I've forgotten about that. That's really cool. <laughs> I've forgotten that feature. The set loops are per group. So if we just turn this off for a second, we are now in group two. So the set loops, all four are on in group two, but in group one, uh, this is where I've got a slight bug here. All right, okay. This will be fixed, but not yet. So group one is only gonna be one and two. So say now on, we move to group two and we set the loops. For this one, you only want two and three. So now we can preset that. Oh, hang on a minute, let's just do this right. Ah, I turned it off, set loop. I want group one and group two to be working. So preset and group. You can build up some complex rhythms. So it could, actually, yeah, you could totally do that. What am I talking about? Because each group's gonna be completely different. Oh, I quite like this. I'd forgotten I'd done this. Accidental feature. So we'll figure that out. And obviously the groups looping is just gonna loop between um, that particular preset. So if you come up with some pretty complex setups. I like that. There we go, right, turn it off now. That's group one. So we've done groups, set the loops, preset loops. We've done zoom and up and down is literally just moving the presets. So if we just go up and down, it just moves through the presets. From eight, my eight vertical mode, this is preset one. Move it down, preset two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the red just to know you at the bottom. So you go back to vertical mode, you're down here. Uh, we've done random clock in external. So that just, if you have a clock input, this is just standard. Um, not too sure what the standard we would call it, but um, leave, yeah, let me know how you get on with your particular clock inputs. It's obviously this, because I've got the sub notes, this is doing 96 um, pulses per second to actually figure out where I am in between each, each sequence note. So there's under the hood, you know, this is, I'd probably use this as like your main clock. Um, but you can, you can clock it if you need to, but I suspect it's probably easier to have the clock output going into some, some of the modules. Um, okay, we've got swing. So by default, um, just if you long press swing button for a couple of seconds, every channel is swing enabled. And if we just turn them off and leave channel uh, eight has a swung channel put the back on that's now in so swing is off let's just mute every channel apart from here we're just going to turn all those yeah okay yeah just eighth notes now going if we then turn swing on that's eighth note swing but and the swing knob is down to zero or down to one, you won't hardly notice it. So it's just moving every, actually I'm not too, let me know if this sounds good. It's just moving them ever so slightly. And it's got 24 pulses. So between zero and 24, so that's maximum swing. 12 would be in the middle. Seven or eight is probably like a sweet spot. 
and that's eight of them swing, and then 16 of them swing. So hopefully you can hear that. And you'll get it to be musical. I'm not really very good at that. One thing to note, um, if, a, if a channel is enabled for swing and the swing mode is on, then the zoom mode will not work. So at the moment, this channel is enabled for swing, um, but the swing is not on, so zoom mode will. Hang on a minute, what am I doing? Oh, on channel, oops, channel six. Let's just move that to channel eight. Here we go, back to zoom mode. So we now got the, the zoom notes are, are enabled. If we then turn swing on, they disappear. It's just, it only works when it's in swing and it's enabled, only the main eighth notes are triggered. So if you do, if you want to just avoid being in swing mode and losing your sub notes, just make sure that everything is just, um, the channel is not swing enabled. And then even if you accidentally move into swing mode, your zoomed notes will still be triggered. There we go. Right, cool. So that is swing. Um, beat mode kind of covered. That just moves to the next preset either straight away or at the end of that sequence. A bit more musical. Tap tempo is one, two, three. And then you can just tap in something. I think it's... Yeah, I'm not too sure if that's actually the best. Anyway, it works that well, but you can just move it anyway with a with a clock encoder. And again, the the buttons to hook this up to are all on the schematic on the GitHub page. But yeah, you can if you do it slowly, it's just one beat at a time. If you spin it faster, it goes every ten. So I put it up a limit to two hundred twenty-two, and it's it keeps pretty good time. And it updates pretty well. So you can quickly get up to fairly high speeds. You can put it all the way down to 10 though. Should you want to. There we go. So let's keep it at 60. And you've got reset. What reset will do is just takes it back to the beginning of the sequence. And it will also send out a trigger at the reset out. If you feed it a reset in, if you've got that bit set up in the schematic as well, then again, that will trigger a reset and just resets everything back to zero. And we've covered fills. Um, yeah, we've got, so there's only two, so there's vertical eight by eight and there's one by 64. Now the eight by eight, every, obviously every row is a channel. Um, if I then go into 60, 64 mode, um, every row is then um, one of the presets for that particular channel. So we are on channel eight. And if I was to just set up looping, is that right? Let's make sure I've got that right. Yeah, set, so it's gonna loop now through all eight presets. And this is channel eight, so if we go by one by 64 mode, So if, say you want down here to have nothing on that particular preset, that's preset eight, preset seven. So this is just, you know, you can build up a 64 beat sequence. And then, you get the idea. So that's 64. If I go back to eight by eight mode, that's everything. And then, because I'm still soloed on that, everything else is muted. But it bring everything back into play. So that's channel. So again, if you don't like the drums all the same, because they're all the, each each preset can be you know, pulled together straight away. Maybe we'll just we'll towards the end of the sequence we'll change that. So that's channel one, 
64 step sequence. If I move down, up, down, that's, I've got anything on the ride. Three is the, some kind of high snare thing. So I'm not sure what that is. Oh yeah, this is just some kind of weird toms. There we go. So we'll turn that off. If we want to override this and say on channel one, um, actually, that's, that's the easiest way to do this. Um, let's move on to group two, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clear groups. Clear group two, so it's all gone. And I'm going to loop through. I want every preset on group two to loop. There's nothing here. So I'm on channel, it doesn't matter where I am on this one, but basically I'm on channel one, which is my kick drum. And I want that to be, so hold on channel one. And then that's going to add a step one and five on every preset in this group because I held it down. And I think, what is it, six was the snare, was the clap. So we'll just do that on that one. So now it's just put this in for everything. 1x64, it's on every vertical mode, channel 1, 64 steps, that's each preset for the drums. So you can you can start with a basic pattern on all your presets in your group by holding the channel and which steps, just plug in directly in. The main of the features, so we'll go back to group 1, we're looping everything now. Uh, I will turn off loops for a second because this is going to get complex very quickly. So we're on preset one, group one, go to eight by eight mode. And what I want to do here is if I press eight by eight again, this is how many steps are currently active per, ch per channel. So say this, I want that still to be eight. I want that to be seven. I want that to be five. I want this one to be six. And then you get the idea. So now we have slightly messed up sound polyrhythm. Doing its thing. And you can obviously, when you reset it, it goes back to the beginning, but it's gonna kick off. And you, again, build up some fairly complex patterns. Back into vertical mode. I can't remember what this is going to do. If I loop this. Yeah. It is. Every, every pattern is now following this polyrhythm that we have set up. Ah. So I can't change the polyrhythms because I'm in loop mode. I've got to turn out of loop mode. Back into 8x8 mode. And then, so this is per, I think it's going to be per group. So this is this channel is always going to be on that particular step length. Again, there's probably, I could pr if there's any other feature requests on this one, we can change it. But say we want to keep everything back to eight, apart from, well, in fact, let's get them all back to eight. They're still out of sequence because they're still on the original path that you had before, even though they're going to be going eight by eight. You might want that, but if you want to reset it, just hit reset and everything's back to where it belongs initially. The only other button to mention here is the start stop button. And uh, this is where I think this is really useful with an SD card in the Teensy. When you stop it, it saves the basic pattern to you know, effectively you know, a default group or default number. So that's always going to be saved. Whatever pattern you're currently working on, when you stop it, that will be saved. So when you turn on the, in fact, let's just, just do this over. This is gonna start it up. There we go, I just pull the power out. So the USB is out, put the USB back in. So this is actually powered down. And it's back where we were. All the presets, everything is back. 
But that's still in the, there's, there's no, there's nothing else saved on this SD card, this, this one. But if we now hit stop and we hit the save button, uh, every button now becomes a save point. Um, the, the top row zero is, if you like, the main save point, which you can actually quickly load up. So typically you would, I guess you'd build up a, an idea. So that's now saved. I guess you can call this position zero, zero. Um, the actual save points will be a grid reference. Actually, I think it's one, one to eight, and then it's column and rows. So you'll see them in the, in the save, in the actual SD card itself, in the cave zero folder. But what I can now do, say I've, so I've saved that down here. Um, group two, I'm just gonna completely randomize this. So it's a different sound, and I wanna save this one to a different group. Oh, sorry, different button. So that's the first save point. If I hit it again, I'm gonna override that, but if I go to here, I've now got two patterns, which I can just load and go back to the original one. Or if I wanna load this one, go back to this one. Now, if I was to build this up, if I was to save this, uh, in fact, we'll re-save that one, and we'll actually, we'll put it over here, which is the top row. So and I'm gonna I'm gonna load up the first one and I'm gonna save this one to here. So I've now saved something on the top row between on number one, number five. Now I can load these up directly just by loading them. So this is the one I'm active on because it's flashing. I can load this one, but because five is the top row, I can use the buttons on the launch pad just to instantly launch it and I can go back to the original save point. So that's basically your fast load. I get pretty instantaneous because this is a really fast microcontroller. So not only can you save up to 64 different patterns, which will persist, and obviously because it's an SD card, it's a very small file, you can share it and collaborate, assuming you have the same output setup. Um, but you can easily build stuff and and share interesting patterns with the community. Um, but yeah. So again, because this is the last one, um, in fact, let's just give an example here. I'm, I'm gonna stop this. This is save point five. I'm gonna restart this. Oop, hit it twice. If I just load up save point one, which is the If I just turn it off, because I last saved save point five, it's gonna go back to here. So because I didn't hit stop, it didn't save that last particular point to the to the default save point. Um I think that might be a good overview of all the of all the key features. So again, this is just just to show this is the TC four point one. Um, this is just a USB header. You can plug, you know, um, a USB. You just have to get one of those sockets, or you can probably fashion something. It's just a just needs a USB, a USB header on there. Um, still trying to figure out how to get the Eurorack power in with a power regulator, but the easiest way that I've found is just to have an external USB plugged into the mains to avoid any noise, um, additional noise introduced into the um, into the, 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 the modular system. Um, <laughs> still, this was done last year. Uh, it's, I need to fix this, got a couple of issues on it but it works quite well and I hope you have fun putting one of these together and yeah let's just see how random we can get if I just turn the random probability up to 80% on oh that's a bit harsh yeah 80% is a bit much you might want to just, let's just clear this. You might want to use 80% on a particular channel. So if I was to hit channel one, that's the drums, or I turned it down, 70%. So 
So maybe it makes more sense to do it on individual channels, but. But if you did hit everything, <laughs> then I don't recommend doing this at all on anything high, but 20% probability on on zoom <laughs> let's do 10 percent probability on everything still bonkers Oop. bit of a bug there do let me know if there's any any major problems with this but it's only outputting 3.5 volts because it's using just the standard output from the Teensy, which as you can see, obviously triggers an Arduino based drum sampler fine. It triggers all the way the modules fine, the clock output. Um, I've not had any problems with this and I'm sure there is a way of increasing that to five volts if need be using either an op amp or some kind of transistor setup. Um, but I've never, I've never had any problems with it. And if you do have any problems, leave me something on the GitHub issues. And uh, we'll fix it. So the firmware, I'm happily going to release that to the community if that is something people are interested in building. Uh, hopefully you are. So have fun and uh, happy new year. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.